Hi, in this section I will be revising the concepts of C and C++ programming that are used in this course. As the course is data structures using C and C++, basically the course is in C language. Plus, I have also shown how to write down the code in C++ also. It is added advantage if you know C++. Even if you don't know C++, it is sufficient to know C language. So you should be already knowing basics of C programming. You should already have some experience of C programming. And the concepts of C programming that are frequently used in this course, I am going to revise them so you are well acquainted or well familiar with those concepts and you can easily understand the rest of the topics. So in this section, I'll be going to discuss about basics about arrays. Though we have a big topic called arrays, a lot of things we are going to learn about that. But here basics about array I will discuss then structures in C language, then pointers, what are pointers, we will study references, parameter passing in C as well as C++, then classes, constructors and templates. These topics are related to C++, these topics are in C language, so these topics are more frequently used and how to use them and what is the approach I am following, you can understand that approach from these topics. And one more thing. If you are already well familiar with C++ programming and you are a good programmer, I suggest you to go through this section so that you understand the style of programming that I have adopted in this course. And you get very familiar and it will be very easy for you to understand the rest of the topics. So let us start with arrays. So right now I will discuss a little bit about arrays. Then in coming videos we will learn about all these things one by one. So let us start with arrays. Arrays is defined as collection of similar data elements. If you have some set of integers or set of floats, you can group them under one name as an array. See, the method of declaring an array is, if you want an integer type array, let us say integer a of 5, then you get 5 integers, array name is a, and all those integers you can access them with name a. So this is an array, and we get 5 integer spaces. And the indices will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 5 locations means the indices starts from 0 and at 4, total 5 spaces. Now I can store 5 integers. Every location is an integer. Every location integer. And if suppose integer, if we assume integer is taking 2 bytes, then these are total 10 bytes. 2 bytes each. Now each location can be accessed with the help of the, like A of 0 assigned 27. So I can store 27 at this place. 27 stored. Now a of 1 if I want to store something then I can store a value 10 like this here. So you can have the group of elements together at one place. Now I will show you how to declare and initialize an array. I will main function. Now in this suppose I want to declare an array a of size 5 and array of size will 5 will be created. Now when the program is running it runs inside the main memory. This is main memory and the main memory is divided into three sections that is code section and stack and heap. It will be inside code section and when any variable is declared like an array is declared so that array will be created here inside the stack. This is where the array will be created and that array will be directly accessible to the main function. And directly I can store the values like already I have shown you I can store some values 10, 5, 8, 3, 9 I can store them. This is how I can declare an array and where the array will be created in the memory I have shown you. Now next thing, I will show you how to declare and initialize an array. This is the declaration of an array. Along with this, I can also initialize it like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So array will be created and it will be already filled with the values. Like suppose an array B is created inside the stack, then it will be filled with the values. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So this is declaration of an array, this portion, and this is initialization of an array. Together I can do, this is just declaration and this is de declaration as well as initialization. Now next thing is, how to access an array. For accessing an array, we can access all the elements one by one. Suppose I want to print all of them, then I can use a for loop. So for that I will take one variable i. And using for loop for integer i assign 0, i is less than 5 elements are there, i plus plus, then using printf I can print it. So printf percentile d, I can say b of i. 
So here, you must be familiar with the for loop. So I assign 0, I is less than or equal to 5, I plus plus. So this will initially, I will be 0. Then it checks that I is less than 5. Then it will print this B of 0. So it will be B of 0. B of 0, the element Z2 will be printed. The next time I plus plus, I becomes 1. 1 is less than 5. So it will print B of 1 and so on up to B of 4. It will print all the elements. So for loop is used for scanning through the list of elements in an array. So more frequently we use for loop for accessing all the elements of an array. So that's it. This is sufficient because we have a very big topic called arrays. We are going to learn lots and lot of things about arrays. Just as an introduction, as a revision, I have done it. So that's it about an array. So the points that I have discussed, let me put them together. I have explained you what does it mean by an array and how to declare and initialize it. And when it is declared inside a function, then where it will appear inside the main memory. This is sufficient for now because we have a lot of things to learn about array. There is a big section called arrays. So there you will learn everything about arrays. So as a revision, I have discussed this much. That is sufficient. We have to learn about other topics. Let us continue in other videos.